Hello everyone, today we're talking about frame rates. So what are the most commonly used frame rates? What are their advantages and disadvantages? We'll also be discussing the general science behind frame rates to help you gain a better understanding. Now every video you watch, whether it be on your television, cell phone or computer, is simply just a series of pictures grouped together and played back in quick succession. This pretty much gives the illusion of motion. The rate at which these pictures are shown is measured in frames per second or FPS. FPS value shows us how fast the pictures will flicker with the faster speeds yielding more fluid and lifelike motion. There are three majorly used standard frame rates. These are 24p for film. 25p or 50i for European broadcasters and 30p or 60i for American broadcasters. The p's and i's stand for progressive and interlaced. In very simple terms, interlaced scans only show half of the picture on the screen at a time with the other half appearing 1 60th of a second later. It's a quick process that the human eye cannot detect. In a progressive scan, the entire picture is displayed at once, which reduces flickering that is mostly noticeable when watching television. Going back to common frame rates, these days we actually have quite a few non-standard options available on cameras and computers. These range from 48 FPS to 120 FPS, which creates silky smooth video. So what do all these numbers mean in the real world? Well firstly, the human eye is able to distinguish 12 pictures per second before it starts seeing motion. So that is, any frame rate lower than 12 FPS and your brain will be able to tell that it's just a number of pictures. About 19 to 26 FPS is where the motion effect takes place and your brain starts seeing a moving scene. In this demonstration, you see a number of frame rates of the same scene. I added some motion in there so you can see the effects of a low FPS versus a high one. It's clear to see that at 12 FPS the motion is so jarred it's noticeable that we have still frames in there. At 5 FPS we have a bit of a disaster. The more frames we get as we move to the right, the smoother. Take a look at 120 FPS, buttery smooth motion. This is an illustration of 50 FPS versus 25 and 12.5 FPS in the form of three moving lines and here you can easily see how the motion in 25 and 12.5 FPS is more jagged. So if your frame rate is too slow, then your motion will look jagged. But if your frame rate is too fast, you end up with what is called the soap opera effect, which is an ultra smooth look to your video. Now many people don't even notice this. Some actually like smoother video and others completely hate it. It's all up to personal preference. Movies like The Hobbit were shot at 48 FPS which created the soap opera effect we just mentioned and a lot of people hated it. So it effectively becomes a situation where you have to find the perfect balance depending on what you're shooting. To make motion seem real, you need motion blur. In the real world, motion blur is the loss of detail you see when an object is moving fast. However, in film, motion blur is present because you're looking at flickering images in a fraction of a second. Film is shot at 24 FPS and yes, at times during some quick action scenes, you do begin to notice some jagged motion. This standard was decided mainly due to economics and not for theatrical reasons, and so the limitations are becoming more apparent in the modern day. 24 FPS is what we've become accustomed to. The motion blur is what we've become used to. So sometimes watching really high frame rate video with fast motion can be strange and a bit annoying. So to sum up, here are the advantages of faster frame rates versus slow, as well as their disadvantages. With faster frame rates, you get silky smooth motion. You also have the ability to slow down frames to get slow motion effects. And now the disadvantages of faster frame rates. It's certainly not for everyone as it's an unfamiliar experience for many. Not a lot of devices even support high frame rate playback. And video equipment that supports high FPS is usually expensive. Now let's talk about the advantages of standard frame rates. Worldwide compatibility with pretty much every video device. Cheaper for production and motion blur that we've become accustomed to. And finally, the disadvantages of standard frame rates. Motion can be a bit jagged at times and no room for slowing video down for cinematic effects. So next time you're picking out a frame rate for your shoot, don't forget to take some of the things we've discussed into consideration. Sometimes it's a good idea to shoot at higher frame rates because you can always conform your video into a more suitable standard FPS. This gives you more flexibility if you need to make use of cinematic effects like slow motion. Thanks for watching and I hope this video was helpful to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos of the sort. See you in the next one.